everyone, Bob here again. This time around, I would like to show you the job description content, which I have written earlier for the fleet manager role. But before anything else, I would like to ask you to please subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you'll be updated or notified of the new uploads. So this description would be about the fleet manager. This is the job title under the role outline. And this position directly reports to the DNL manager and the functional managers will be the supply chain manager. And these jobs are all directly reporting to the fleet manager, workshop manager, ship manager, fleet QA manager. Ship manager would be would be there if the operation is 24 seven. So there will be three managers for the ship manager, uh, three shifts. There are other positions, but they are not reporting directly to the fleet manager, which I'm going to cover in the key relationship later on in this job description. The core purpose of job is to ensure formulation of standard operating procedures for effective and efficient implementation of preventive and repair maintenance of transport fleets and ensuring their availability in transport operation. So the job of the fleet manager is to support the transport manager of their operation in terms of the maintenance, making sure that all the fleet units are in A1 quality or condition, and they are all available for transport utilization. Now let's discuss about the area of responsibilities or the AOR and with corresponding success indicators. Number one AOR is SOP and work methods. Ensure formulation of standard procedures and work methodologies that will be used as guidance for mechanics, auto electricians, ref techs or ref refer technicians and other technicians in the performance of their responsibilities. So to ensure that the uh, there will be guidance for mechanics, auto electrician, ref uh, in doing their jobs in, in, the, maintenance, in main, the maintenance of the fleet units. The fleet manager is ensuring provision of this guidance, which is in, in the form of SOP and, and documentation for work methodologies. The success indicator for this is the number one is clear, understood, accepted, and owned is open for effective and efficient execution of fleet maintenance. The second AOR would be the preventive maintenance or PM. Ensure effective and efficient execution of PM servicing of fleet units based on SOPs and other guidance issued by the fleet manager. Uh, this is one of the main responsibility of the fleet maintenance or the workshop so the, the uh, fleet manager ensuring that preventive maintenance will be constantly developed and improved so that there will be uh, a very uh, effective and efficient, uh, you know, uh, repairing or maintenance or servicing of the units. And the second, uh, Success indicator would be achievement of total maintenance of fleet units with zero backlogs. So the fleet manager will ensure that there will be no backlogs. As the preventive maintenance is scheduled every month for all the units, let's say you have 1,000 units of tractors, reapers, and, and tankers, and other uh, sundry equipment, and they are being uh, scheduled every month or every couple of months or every three months. And this is uh, in agreement between transport manager and fleet manager. So if the transport manager are failing to release all these units for the schedule preventive maintenance, then that issues will be discussed and they will should target a zero backlog. Number three is repair maintenance or RM. Ensure attendance and immediate response to unscheduled breakdown of units on the road. Okay, um, 
while there is a, a preventive maintenance schedule in place, uh, sometimes uh, it happens that the vehicles are experiencing breakdowns on the road. So there is a separate uh, team or separate group of maintenance technicians doing this uh, responses to some breakdowns on the road. They have all the equipment like a service raker in case the tractor cannot be repaired on the road, they will pull it down or they will rig the uh, tractor or trailer back to the workshop for uh, for their uh, repair and maintenance. So the success indicator for this would be the effective and efficient response to unscheduled servicing breakdown of units and emergency road calls. Number four of the EOR is budget planning. This is one of the critical, one of the most critical uh, EOR of the fleet manager because it has something to do with money, finances. Without the budget, the fleet maintenance will not exist and not be able to fulfill their duties as support to the, to the transport department in terms of maintenance and making the availability of the units. So ensure inclusion of essential cost center items in the budget plan consequently approval by the management or the CEO will approve the budget. The budget approval will be uh, will be uh, approved by the initially by the DNL manager and then it will go to the GM and general manager and then it will go to CEO for final approval of the budget. Number five, AOR is the inventory management and control. Ensure proper inventory management of parts and materials and efficient replenishment of stock. And there be a lot, lots of uh, spare parts, materials, and other things or other stuff that uh, the workshop is using for the uh, repair and maintenance of vehicles. So it is the job of the fleet manager to ensure that this all these uh, uh, items are in stock and available for use. Otherwise, the, the, if some parts or some materials are not available, and they have to go for immediate purchase, uh, bypassing the regular purchase order or the PO. So this is the things or this uh, exep exception of the rule should be avoided by the fleet manager, ensuring that everything are in stocks and available for use. Okay, otherwise the, uh, the downtime factor will increase for the non-utilization or the break time, breakdown of the units. So the success indicators would be ensure replenishment of fast moving parts, especially parts, uh, fast moving far parts, uh, which is always utilized every day or daily. And materials and regular inventory count is implemented in the coordination of the accounting department. So there will be jobs like stock controller, stock control work, or other jobs in the workshop will coordinate with the accounting department, maybe accounting officer or some somebody in the accounting. These, these guys will work together to do the inventory count, uh, which will happen maybe once a month or even often or more frequent. Number six is continuous improvement. Ensure the conduct of audit, review of systems and procedures and improvement of methodologies in mechanical, electrical, tire welding and paint shops and other shops in the workshops. Okay. So the fleet manager or will be doing the audit or he will be delegating it to his guy or to these other jobs like workshop inbound uh, or ship managers or supervisors. Uh, this is for the purpose of continuous improvement, okay? Improving and developing and improving of the uh, methods, the systems and procedures, the SOPs, the work work uh, statement, uh, work uh, instructions rather. So continuous improvement, which is in coordination, okay, uh, of the QMS quality management system. This is the leadership of quality management system, the continuous improvement. Uh, one of them is the SOPs, and other is the lean management, 
lean management is making sure that there will be no wastage in terms of the materials and spare parts so that the cost will reduce will be reduced so the success indicators for this will be the regular review and improvement of sop work method systems and other improvement initiatives number seven is health and safety programs implement health and safety programs such as inspection uh, safety inspection audit or safety audit safety training risk assessment and accident prevention initiatives and and the guys would be doing this should have attended the training and be already developed and are already competent person who will be doing all these activities they are certified by the training department or the health and safety department that they are competent person in doing all these health and safety programs and the success indicators would would this would be mitigate potential hazards and high risk activities thus eliminate if not reduce health and safety issues that may pose danger or accident which would result of physical injuries or damage to property so these are the things that we want to prevent accident prevention because the cost would be uh, much greater if you have damage to properties or physical injuries there are so many costs costs will in be incurred by uh, by having these uh, issues number eight is the training programs and this is the generic programs of the uh, training department ensure tna or training needs assessment is carried out unidentified staffs are made available and released for training attendance the success indicators for this will be achievement of training attendance now let's talk about the activities of the fleet manager carry out annual budget planning taking into consideration the cost driver which are total volumes of sales total operating hours total kilometer run and total fleet equipment and sundry equipment also in consideration are the total headcount that will execute the repair and maintenance operations so the driver of the cost would be the total volume of sales or the forecast coming from the sales department this coming from this will be the the other cost drivers will be calculated in terms of the operating hours like the thermo king or the carrier then the fuel will can be calculated based from this also the total kilometer run of the fleet how many uh, count in terms of the fleet tractors trailer tankers and other equipment they need the uh, the fuel to run so therefore the the fuel that they're going to consume for the for the period of year one year then all this cost will be calculated and also you have to make sure that you have enough head count to work in the workshop for the repair and maintenance in for for the fleet units Second activity is establishing the parts of materials inventory management systems and procedures. Monitoring the operating expenses, cost overhead, and fleet repair and maintenance costs on a regular basis for proper control to ensure everything are within the approved budget. Perhaps your own fleet manager activities could be different from this like they are utilizing uh, third party uh, fleet units then the activities could would be different from this one but just the same i'm just giving you the template for you to follow when you're doing your own uh, job description for your own fleet manager 
coordinating with HRM in regards to recruitment, training, personal performance, management, personal administration, compensation, and other HR requirements. Presiding regular meetings with workshop management staff to discuss pertinent matters, issues, progress, or completion of action plan or smart objectives with the end view of coming out with resolutions of the problems that may arise. Okay, uh, the fleet manager will, will uh, convene meetings or preside meetings with, with his own uh, management committee meetings. We'll also attend uh, transport committee meetings or warehouse committee meetings, or they will, uh, you know, convene their own as a one team, the warehouse, transport, and the fleet to have their own meetings, discuss uh, issues between functions. Monitor and review fleet performance in terms of utilization versus downtime factor, hence improving the OE and KPIs. OE means overall equipment efficiency, effectiveness, and key performance indicators. Ensuring the provision of training and development to the workshop staff based on weaknesses identified from the result performance appraisal. Appraisal could be done every six months or every one year. And implementation will be from the systems and procedures of training department and corporate policy. Number eight, ensuring staff undergo induction training, practical competency assessment, and sign up with the fleet manager for commencing his her assumptions of duty. Just like the transport department, the transport manager is doing the sign off for their own uh, employees like uh, long haul driver and yard operator. The fleet manager is do also doing that, uh, having their new employees undergo training, uh, on the job training, um, or practical competency assessment, and ensure that they are assessed and they pass the assessment so that the fleet manager will approve so that this new employee will uh, commence their job. Number nine, conducting regular visual inspection of all areas of the maintenance shops and audit for continuous improvement purposes. This could be done by the fleet manager or he could delegate these activities to his uh, junior managers and supervisors. Number 10, through the supervisors and technicians, Ensuring that all tractors, reefers, and cooling units are in excellent physical and operating conditions before every trip. So this is the responsibility of the fleet manager to ensure that all the fleet units are in A1 conditions, physical, good physical conditions, and they are all available for utilization by the transport department. Number 11, regularly assessing all units for conditions forward recommendations to the email manager those which are experiencing below standard in terms of downtime factor or incurring high repair and maintenance costs and decide whether to refurbish or dispose. The recommendation will come from the fleet manager, not from the transport manager, because in terms of the technology, in terms of the, the uh, physical conditions of the units, the fleet manager has, the, has more awareness uh, of the condition. So the uh, fleet manager will make the recommendation, will, ask, do, will be doing assessment and make a recommendation to the general manager and will discuss with manager which of the units are going to be repurposed or disposed. This, this uh, disposition will, will come from the, uh, the downtime factor, the report, the condition report of the units, and then consequently decide whether to refurbish or major repair or dispose or replace with a new unit. Number 12, ensuring efficient repair and maintenance performance of fleet is achieved in accordance with repair and maintenance standards and workshop SOPs and achieve high utilization of fleet units at minimal cost and reducing vehicle downtime. Liaising with other function line managers required for a smooth overall DNL operations. Under the DNL umbrella, there are warehouse inbound and outbound logistics. There are transport. There is what you call uh, fleet uh, management or workshops. 
So there, these are various functions. Okay. And the fleet manager will liaise with other functions because uh, their operations are affected with other functions. And the fleet managers will ensure that there will be no issues. And, there, and whether there are issues, it should be uh, addressed immediately by liaising with other functions. Number 14, planning of scheduled vacation leave, holiday off, training attendance, and other off workshop activities of staff so that vacuum of staff in the workshop will be avoided. So the fleet manager will plan the, the uh, off of the staff, that there should be no bigger numbers vacationing or going out for holiday or attending some training. So if this happens, and you're gonna have a bigger issues in the workshop by having less uh, manpower attending all the maintenance and servicing of the fleet units. Now let's go to job features. Under the job features, job dimensions. What is job dimension? It is quantifiable job features. For example, volumes handle revenue and budget size, number of subordinates, number of suppliers, number of customers served, variety of sub -functional, functional areas handled, okay? Something to do with finances, something to do with budget, something to do with the money. And this is where the, this is the area where the fleet manager is getting more score in terms of the hay method job evaluation. Because he is, if he is having more, uh, having more uh, uh, budget or having more overhead expenses, then then it will be the responsibility will be bigger and the accountability will also be bigger and will have a, a bigger effect in terms of the the uh, job size of the position in terms of variety of functional areas handled if if a manager is having more functional areas then he will also get a bigger job size of the function like for example, the DNL manager is having multi-function uh, being handled. Like he's handling warehouse operation, he's handling the shipping, distribution, he's handling the workshop, he's handling also the transport. And those managers are reporting to him like the transport, warehouse manager and the fleet manager, okay? So if you are having more function under your uh, responsibility, then you're gonna have more job size in your role as a manager, okay? So this is not actual uh, figures. This is just coming from my imagination, just to, just to show you that uh, you are having figures in this area of the job description for your job dimension. So like, for example, number one, total kilometer coverage of fleet is 110 million kilometer per year. Of, of long haul uh, trips. Uh, this is very important because this is the basis of your budget planning. Then the annual budget of 200 million, for example, uh, which is for the labor and overhead or operating expense. And then managing the servicing of 1.5 billion value of assets. So you have to consider also in your the job dimension, the value of the assets, like the tractor, the rivers. Uh, this is in terms of billions. And this is depreciated uh, in five years. You know? The useful life is five years, or the payback is five years. Uh, ROI 100% after five years. Okay, that or usually that's the standard of the uh, useful life of the assets like uh, tractors, trailers, and other equipment. Okay, so there will be a depreciation cost for this equipment. And this is a bigger responsibility for the fleet manager and also uh, accountability. Whatever happens to those in, uh, equipment or fleet units uh, during their uh, maintenance will be a bigger accountability for the fleet manager. Number four, inventory management of 100 million company owned stock and 50 million consignment stock for the spare parts and materials. There are companies who own 100% of the stocks 
and there are companies who own 50% of the stock and 50% under consignment. Okay, consignment is like you're getting parts or materials from this accredited supplier and you're putting it inside your warehouse and you're not paying it until those stocks are utilized by the by the workshops so that is the only time that you're going to pay the supplier for the stock so that would be advantageous for the company because they're not uh, paying the stock until the stock are being utilized number five number of tractor units like 510 total numbers of rivers 570 total number of tankers 54 and total headcount of workshop is 112. So this would be the job dimension. Uh, the in terms of finances, in terms of the budget, in terms of the value of the asset. Job features still that would be the job context, uh, circumstances characterizing the job in terms of working hours, location, stress, physical conditions, resources available. Number one is complex and demanding operation with high volumes of finished product and materials to support the manufacturing plant and market nationwide. That requires constant monitoring and control. Extremely high level of activity that must be performed to a high level within very tight schedules, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Minimum 48 hours. So that would be the uh, duty hours of the fleet manager, but would be on call on various emergency situations. So like if there's some issue or something happens, emergency during uh, the time of midnight, then the manager being a manager or fleet manager should respond to the situation or the emergency situation. So would extend working hours beyond 24 seven. Number four, fast moving challenging environment that requires the ability to make sound decisions good judgments and react in difficult and under stressful situations. Number five, manage a diverse team of multicultural staff that have limited understanding of safety and service requirement. So this is the, in terms of the, the, the complexity, in terms of the stress, in terms of the hardships, all of that will be indicated here in the job context because this is the circumstances characterizing the job. Now let's go to key relationships, internal, superior, peer, subordinate. It's not very, actually very critical, but this just uh, showing the reader of the job description that uh, this is all the roles got in terms of the superior, peer, and subordinates. So like the superior is the inner manager, is the line manager of the, the fleet manager. The peer, this is, these are equal ranking, equal ranking of the other managers. They have, in terms of equality, maybe in terms of the job size, a bit of differences, like in terms of score, the job size. Maybe other one would uh, get a 100, job size, the other would get 115 job size, 150 job size. But in terms of ranking, they are all the same in terms of ranking. So they are, that's why they're called peer. So one of them is transport manager, warehouse operations manager, inbound logistics manager, outbound logistics manager, production manager, engineering manager, personal manager, accounting manager. Or could, there could be more. And the subordinates are the guys uh, reporting to the fleet managers like the workshop manager, shift manager, workshop supervisor, workshop foreman, lead man, fleet inspector, mechanic, electrician, refrigeration technician, tire man, shop man. Or you could be having something else in terms of the job title or, or additional uh, position that you could add to the subordinates. Or could be like uh, I have mentioned earlier, the shop, the stock control, clerk or the stack controller could be added to this. Now let's talk about the person specification. In terms of qualification, there are two qualifications, the essential and desirable. But usually the HRM or the recruitment manager would look for the essential for their recruitment. 
as this is the the one that really matters uh, in terms of recruiting the the jobs or the the person that you're going to take on the jobs uh, essential uh, qualifications for this role is bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering you could divert to electrical engineering but most of the workshop are getting mechanical engineering because uh, majority of the maintenances are related to mechanical engines under chassis trailers you know uh, refrigeration they're all mechanical but the electrical uh, maintenance are supporting number uh, the main support for the the mechanical maintenance but when you say you will get the desirable that, that also be but you are actually uh, over qualifying the position but in terms of desirable master science in engineering membership or recognized organization for example uh, asme or psme american society of mechanical engineers or philippine society of mechanical engineers in terms of experience the essential responsibilities is 10 years extensive management experience in a similar environment why 10 years this is more than the i have specified for the transport manager i have i remember i specified seven years for the transport managers why because this is in terms of the the uh, technical know-how in terms of uh, awareness in terms of the technology because it's handling uh, highly complex uh, machinery and equipment the the fleet engineering manager or the fleet manager that's why in terms of the technical know-how is he's got more in terms of the experience because of the technical know-how but maybe in terms of management breadth maybe they are scoring the same in terms of management breadth because the the uh, the uh, transport manager is doing problem solving is also leading is managing resources the the man resources uh, just like the fleet manager maybe the transport manager will go will score a little bit higher but not too much not too high not too high they're almost the same in terms of the management breadth but when it comes to technical know-how or even the problem solving uh, uh, aspect of the job evaluation the the the, uh, the fleet manager will uh, score higher than the transport manager so that's why i specify the 10 years So in terms of desirable experience, previous experience in SAP environment, uh, that would be a computer system. Uh, all all uh, functions are computerized nowadays. So the, the manager should have experience in terms of the computer system. Oh, that would be desirable because if it doesn't have experience, the manager will be given, uh, provided with uh, training by the IT or the, the IT department in terms of the computer. Okay. And another desirable responsibility is the refrigeration and trailer barn because the river are utilizing either the thermoking or uh, career refrigeration. And lastly, we'll go to the competencies. This is the last part of the job description in terms of technical, operational, managerial, human, and cultural requirements. Or the competencies is uh, comprised of knowledge, skills, and attitude or, or behavior. One is technical knowledge of road transport industry, multimodal transport securement systems, knowledge of electronic, fuel management, pneumatic braking system, air suspension system. They are quite different when you, you compare with the ordinary truck, like the straight truck or the, maybe the 10 wheeler truck. Uh, this is 18 wheelers uh, most of the time so there are uh, differences in terms of the brake system air suspension okay in terms of climate control system in terms of electronic hydraulic clutch mechanism etc knowledge of refrigerated trucks with thermoking or carrier units computer literate in terms of ms office like the powerpoint ms word excel or even MS Visio. And the person should be team player or the job or the incumbent of the job would be team player. 
man management hands on style and ability to coach because as a fleet manager and also coaching from time to time other uh, staff or even his own mentoring his own managers like the ship manager or the workshop managers is he should be a problem solver and decision making skills and having excellent leadership interpersonal analytical and planning skills so that's all i got for you in this job description i hope to uh, show you again uh, of another job description of other uh, managerial role uh, okay i hope you like it i hope you like this presentation and if you do please don't forget to subscribe share like and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you will be notified of all the upcoming uh, videos of this channel uh, thank you very much